The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us an example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in form, the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God was also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered them, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during their insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging him, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they, handed, they led him up to be crucified. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right 
and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it up in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in his, this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. Truly this man was God's son. Amen. In many ways, that is the sermon for this day. We don't worship this day with one single event. We come into Palm Sunday already feeling a tension building in different ways and for different reasons, not the least of which is because something has been at work, perhaps fast or with great energy, or still perhaps slowly, even imperceptibly to some. Like streams that are assumed to be trickles, comes a convergence of elements, of peoples, of agendas, of pre perceptions of what is happening against prejudices, predispositions, until that convergence is more of a flood. The various groups are now in Jerusalem as Jesus himself enters the city, converging as many waters are rushing together. The Jewish people, traitors, pilgrims, the Jewish authorities, the puppet government of Herod's court, and of course, the Roman Empire. And then comes Jesus and a very different kind of group. Scholars point out that there is good reason to think that while the people were acclaiming Jesus entering in the city through one gate, the Roman army was entering at the same time to remind people of the order, the power, the authority they project, even in the midst of so many people clamoring into Jerusalem for the Passover. So many feelings are also converging with these various peoples, some longing, some excited, some even burdened or feeling homesick as they navigate unfamiliar streets. In Matthew's telling of the scene, the evangelist says that the whole city is in commotion, and how could they not be? So many things build up to this convergence, but our worship reminds us that there is even more that happens as we move through this next week and into Friday. What seems to be shared by all these groups would be anxiety and fear, felt by all except one, Jesus. On this day, Jesus embodies what is the opposite of fear and anxiety, trust, and the power that comes from absolute and whole love, the depth of which we immediately switch our attention to in our worship once we welcome Jesus and the crowd that ironically or rather inevitably cheered him now ends up demanding his death by the end of the week. Jesus' whole ministry has been leading to Jerusalem and the brokenness of this world. Jesus knew full on what was coming, challenge, rejection, and betrayal, ridicule, torture, and even death. And he knew this was the way to bring God light into the darkness of this world. 
what Jesus Christ shows us as he enters Jerusalem and how he takes up the cross is the power that trust based on love rather than popularity or even brutal power is able to fulfill and that in a world that seems so fearful, anxious, and uncertain, there can be hope. In Holy Week, we do more than read a familiar story, offer a prayer, or even gather and worship. Palm Sunday compels us into the story itself. It becomes our story. We too embark this week with Jesus into Jerusalem, and we experience the power and the wonder of Christ's passion from several perspectives. More than simply a remembrance, Palm Sunday and Holy Week is an invitation to consider intently, no matter what our experience has been, or our education, or even our age, what it means for our life now that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that we too share in an eternal and right life, especially here and now. Amen. The Prayers of the People for today is Form 4, which is found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the, Christ, for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Stephen, Philip, and Tony, for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to you, your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially Ann, Ann, B, the Brewer family, Bunny, the Filamanoff family, Jacob, Jane, Janet, Joe, June, Judy, Keith, Lana, Leanne, Lily, Lou, Mary, Michelle, Nancy, Penny, Richard, Ryan, Susan, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of Ukraine and the Holy Land at this time. And we pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world, as well as all our shut-in parishioners and their caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Alex, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us together pray for our Stephen ministers. Loving God, inspire each of us to reach out during this Lenten season of transformation to those facing life's changes and challenges. Guide and empower our Stephen ministers and leaders as they provide spiritual companionship to those in need of support and understanding. 
and in prayerful consideration, may you give those who feel they or someone close to them would benefit from a care-receiving relationship the courage to ask for a Stephen minister to walk alongside them. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 